Hello everybody, welcome to the live session by Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. I am Mizba, your maths educator and over here we are going to do more questions on statistics in, and probability. In the previous session, previous two sessions, we did questions on statistics and then on probability. Right now we are going to do more questions on statistics and probability. Hello uh, Gamer, hello my name is Rahul, hello Android app, welcome to this session. So let's start with the class. We are going to do more questions on statistics and probability. So what about this question? A very basic question guys. Can you tell me the answer to this one? Can you tell me over here, what is the lower limit of the modal class? So what will be the lower limit of the modal class? Hi Abhinandan, welcome to this session. So what is the lower limit of the modal class over here? See this is 5. I'm sorry it is not visible properly 27, 20, 18 and over here it is 12. So can you tell me the lower limit of the modal class over here? Hello noob, welcome to this session. Exactly, so what is the modal class guys? The class interval having maximum frequency, right? Class interval having maximum frequency is this. The maximum frequency over here is 27, clear? So you can say the lower limit of the modal class over here is 127, exactly. 127 rupees is the answer to this question. Is it clear? Hello education, welcome to this session. Exactly, bahut easy question hai. Any doubt to this guys? In this, oh, okay, your name is, I'm sorry, I've got a vision problem. I'm not able to see your name properly over here. Good evening, Jai Shri Ram. Welcome to this session. Oh, okay, from Ethiopia, very good. So the answer to the first part over here is 127. First question is 127. The lower limit of the modal class is 127. I hope it is clear to you. Hello Chesh, welcome to this session. So let us move on to the next question. So can you find the median over here guys? Tell me the answer to this question. Following is the distribution of the long jump competition in which 250 students participated. So you have to find the median distance jumped by the students. Can you tell me the answer over here? In meters obviously. Try doing this one and let me know the answer quickly. So first we'll take up some questions on statistics and then we'll be doing questions on probability as well. So guys, in order to find the median, the very first thing to do is to find the median class, is to identify the median class over here, right? Uh, no, I don't know Spanish. I hope you understand that, Susan. Okay, so over here you see that 250, 250 is already given. This is the sum of all the frequencies in this uh, question, right? So we write it by n, we show it by n is equal to 250. Now what is n by 2 guys? n by 2 is 125. Now in order to find the median, you, you find the cumulative frequencies, right? You find the cumulative frequencies, I'm writing over here itself guys. This is the frequencies, these are frequencies and I'll write cumulative frequencies in between. Don't do like this in the examination, I hope you understand. So this is 40, then 40 plus 80, 120. 120 plus 62 will be what guys? Uh, 182. Yes or no? And 182 plus 38, what will be that? 120, sorry, 220 over here it will be guys. Wait, it will be 220 over here. And 220 plus 30 will be 250. Now, how to find the median class? The class interval having cumulative frequency just greater than n by 2. The class interval having cumulative frequency just greater than 1 by 2 is uh, 125 is what guys? Is this class interval because n by 2 is 125. So the class interval having cumulative frequency just greater than 125 is 182 over here. So this is the median class. So how to find the median guys? The formula to find the median is L plus H into N by 2 minus CF by F, right? Now what is L over here? L is the lower limit of the median class. The lower limit of the median class is 2. What is the class size? Class size is 3 minus 2, that is 1 over here. And what is N by 2? N by 2 we already have got, that is 125. Now what is CF guys? CF is the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class. So cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class is 120. So just put 120 over here. 
And what is F? F is the frequency of the median class. So frequency of the median class is 62 over here. So just put 62. So this is the answer. Just simplify, you'll get the answer. 2 plus 5 upon 62. So do the calculation, guys. And this many meters is the median of this question. Any doubt to this question, guys? Exactly. Whatever is the calculation, Manwar, I'm not doing 5 upon 62. I hope you understand that. So you can do that. Is this clear, Nob? Is this clear, Manwara, Vinay Kumar? Hello, welcome to this session. Any doubt in this question to any student in the class? It's a direct question. It's a sample paper question, I guess. Any doubt in the question, guys? Yeah, whatever you may get, median is equal to, just calculate it, two points something, obviously, you'll get. I'm not doing calculation. I don't have enough space as well. Is it clear, guys? Any doubt in this question to any student over here? Just let me know that quickly in the chat, guys. Okay, fine. So let us take the next question over here. What about this? You have to find the mean number of runs over here. It means you have to find the mean over here. So can you tell me the answer to this question? Hello, Milan. Welcome to this session. Good evening, Bhagwant Dara. Welcome to this session. Okay, fine. What about this? You have to find mean over here. So again, I would say C. If there is a method which is not mentioned in the question, I would every time recommend to use the assumed mean method only. Although step deviation method is not in the syllabus, if it would have been in the syllabus, I would have recommend, recommended that only because it saves your time in calculation. <clears throat> okay, Noob, well, very good. So what will you do in case of mean? So you see these are frequencies given over here, fi, right? So wait, maybe I'll write the data over here so that it will save our time. Because, uh, so this is 0 to 40 and it is going up till 200, right? Let me write it, guys. Right, these are the class intervals over here. Now, what about frequencies? Frequencies are 12, 20, 35, 30, 23. 35, 30, and 23 over here. Now, what will you do, guys? You will find the class marks over here. That's how you find mean. So, class mark will be what? Lower limit plus upper limit by 2. So, 0 plus 40 by 2 will be 20 over here. Now, the second class mark will be what? 80 plus 40 by 2, that is... Uh, 120 by 2 and that is going to be 60. So you see the gap of 40 is there. So this will be 100, 140 and 180 over here, right? Now you can take one class mark as the assumed mean. So I'm taking this to be assumed mean. Now you will find the corresponding deviations. Di is equal to Xi minus A over here, clear? So Xi minus A, 20 minus 100 will be minus 80. So you'll get minus 80, 60 minus 100, minus 40, 0, 40, and 80. Clear? Any doubt to anybody over here? Good evening, Bhagwan. Welcome to the session. Okay. Now we have to find FIDI. That's how you find uh, mean, guys. So FIDI will be what? Minus 960, and it will give you minus 800, and this will give you 0, and this will be 1200 and this will give you 1800. So this will be 1840 over here. Okay, so this is your FIDI. Now you have to find sigma FIDI. That's how you find mean. So sigma FIDI, if you will do first, you have to find 1840 plus 1200. What is that equal to, guys? This is 0, 4, 3, 0, 4, 0 over here, right? Now you have to uh, find the sum of these two. So what is that equal to? Tell me. 17, right? So it's a bit calculative, guys. So 0. So it is coming out to be 1280. Is it clear? So this is coming out to be 1280. Now how you find mean, guys? Mean is equal to x bar is equal to, if you use the assumed mean method, it is a plus sigma fi di upon sigma fi, right? A plus sigma fi di upon sigma fi over here. Now, what is A over here, guys? The assumed mean over here is 100. So, 100 plus 
सिग्मा एफ आई डी आई इज वॉट गाइज सिग्मा एफ आई डी आई इज ट्वेल्व एटी विच आई हैलकुलेटेड ओवर हेयर सो इट इज ट्वेल्व एटी ओवर हेयर एंड वॉट इज सिग्मा एफ आई ओवर हेयर गाइज सिग्मा एफ आई सिग्मा एफ आई इज नॉट डायरेक्टली गिवेन इन द्वेश्चन नो प्रॉब्लम सो विल हैव टू एड एंड चेक वट इज सिग्मा एफ आई ओवर हेयर गाइज जस्ट कैलकुलेट एंड टेल मी वट इज सिग्मा एफ आई सिग्मा एफ आई इज कमिंग आउट टू बी वन ट्वेंटी इट इज कमिंग आउट टू बी वन ट्वेंटी सो सिग्मा एफ आई इज कमिंग आउट टू बी वन ट्वेंटी सो दिस इज दीन गाइज दिस इज दीन यू कैन कैलकुलेट एंड नो दी आंसर ओवर फोर थ्री जार ट्वेल्व फोर थ्री जार ट्वेल्व फोर टू जार एट सो दिस विल बी कमिंग आउट टू बी इक्वल टू हंड्रेड प्लस टेन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन अप्रॉक्सीमेटली सो दिस इज वन हंड्रेड टेन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन सो दिस इज दी मीन ओवर है वॉट वॉज द डेटा मीन नंबर ऑफ रन सो यू विल से वन Runs is the mean over here. Any doubt to any student over here? Okay, Fauzan, is the question clear? Okay, Balaji, but it is uh, written over there, Manwara. That's why I'm taking that name. Is this clear? Any doubt to any student over here? These questions will come in the examination. Any doubt to any student over here? It's a direct formula based question. The process is defined. You don't have to do. You don't have to deviate from that process. You just have to follow the process, right? and one more word i mean i had forgot that this is di it means deviations deviation from the assumed mean is it clear no it will come out to be 110 manwara 110.67 you must have done some mistake 110 it will come out <clears throat> yeah because uh, 32 by 3 you must have done calculation mistake it is not 1.67 it will be 10.67 right i hope it is clear any doubt to anybody over here so that's all we needed to do in that question or what about this question median is given you have to find the missing frequency over here. you have to find the value of x so try doing this and let me know the answer in the chat guys <clears throat> what about this question median is already given to you you have to find the value of the missing frequency in this question so very simple thing again median is given so you have to find cumulative frequency for that because uh, if you don't find the cumulative frequency you cannot find median right so number of persons it is nothing but frequency over here now let us find the cumulative frequency over here right so this is 5 5 plus 25 it is 30 over here so 30 plus x is x plus 30 over here now if you add 18 you'll get x plus 48 over here right x plus 48 plus 7 will give you x plus 55 clear so what is x plus 55 over here this is nothing but the sum of all the frequencies i hope it is clear this is the sum of the all the frequencies the cumulative frequency in the last of the last class interval is the sum of the all frequencies you know that already now you see median is already given in this question that is 24 years median is already given in the question 24 years so can i not say that the median class over here will be this guys because 24 is going to come in this class interval yes or no so median is what guys uh, if i use the formula it is l plus h into n by 2 minus cf upon f right this is the formula to find the median and this is given to be equal to 24 over here clear now what is l guys l is the lower limit of the median class so it is 20 plus h is what h is the class size class size is 10 over here now what is n by 2 over here guys n n is equal to x plus 55 so n by 2 will be x plus 55 by 2 over here clear and what is cf cf is the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class so cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class is 30 over here and what is f in this formula it is the frequency of the median class so frequency of the median class is nothing but x and this thing is given to be equal to 24 so this is the whole data which you need to use i hope it is clear guys exactly it is correct noob i hope it is clear. you just have to solve this equation so what will you get over here so you see if i subtract 20 on this side i'll get 4 over here right so i'll do some calculation quickly okay so i'll get 10 into x plus 55 and if you take the lcm over here you'll get 30 uh, minus 60 over here right and in the denominator you are going to have 2x and this will be subtracted so you'll get 4 over here right so that's all we needed to see in this thing now this is 2 5s are 
and see x will be cross multiplied so you are left with x uh, 5 into x minus 5 and that is equal to 4x over here. Let us simplify this, you will get the answer. So, it is 5x minus 25 that is equal to 4x and if you solve this equation, you will get x is equal to 25. So, x is equal to 25 is the answer. Any, any doubt to any student over here? Okay, fine. Noob, it is already given in the question that median is 24 years. See the question. Already the median is 24 years. So, can we not say that median class will be this only? Here you do not have to find the median class. Median is already given. So, you can say that obviously 24 will lie in this category. So, therefore, this is the median class. Is it clear? Exactly, you are right Ansh. So, it comes with practice only noob. If you practice enough number of questions, automatically you will be fast. See, it is not a very miracle or a rocket science, something like that. If I also used to do for the first time, I was also slow. It comes with practice. That's it. I hope it is clear. Any doubt to any student over here in the class? Tell me, guys. It is clear? Ah, okay, fine. That's good. Okay, Manuara. Okay, Noob. Okay, Ansh. Okay, let us take the next question over here. What about this? You have to find the mode. It's a direct question. You have to find the mode over here. So, I will write it again for you because again, uh, if it is not properly visible, you will not be able to do. Try doing it guys. Okay, so frequencies are also given. These are the frequencies I will write for you. 25, 34, 50, 42, 38, 14. So, you have to find the mode over here. Try doing this and let me know the answer in the chat guys quickly. Why are you guys not calculating quickly? Exactly no. So, the class interval having maximum frequency is the modal class. No, uh, it was, uh, okay, fine, 40 to 45. Yeah, it is the maximum frequency over here. So, that is the modal class. The class interval having maximum frequency is the modal class. Now, what is the formula to find the mode, guys? Formula is L plus H into F1 minus F0 upon 2 F1 minus F0 minus F2, right? Recheck it, F L plus H into F1 minus F0 upon 2 F1 minus F0 minus F2. That is correct. Now, what is the lower limit of the modal class? See, 40 to 45 is the modal class. So, lower limit of the modal class is 40 over here. Now, what is H over here? H is the class size. So, 45 minus 40 is 5 over here. Now, let us talk about F1, F0, F2. So, basically, it is sequence, guys. This will be 0, 1, 2. The modal class will have F1 as the frequency. That is how you write it, right? So, F1 minus F0 will be over here. Uh, okay, let me check it. F1 minus F0 is going to be 42 minus 50 over here upon 2 F1. So, that is 2 into 42 F1 minus F0 minus F2. F2 over here is 38. So, this is the mode guys. Any doubt in this? Just solve it and get the answer. 35 to 40. Oh my god, I did a mistake. Yeah, you are right. I did a slight mistake over here. No problem. Uh, okay, fine. Oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. It will take some seconds only. We will do it quickly. Right, right. Okay, fine. So, maximum frequency over here is 50, right? So, obviously, this will be the cl uh, modal class over here. 35 to 40 will be the modal class. So, lower limit over here is 35 and class size is 5 over here. So, you will write like this F0, F1, F2, right? Now, F1 minus F2 over here will be what, guys? F1 minus F0. That is 50 minus 34. Now, 2 F1 over here. So, 2 F1 is 50. 2 F1 minus F0 minus F2 over here. That is 42. I hope it is clear to everybody now. Exactly, it is correct. So, I hope it is clear. Lower limit is over here uh, 35. So, this is basically 16 and in the denominator, this is 100, 100 minus uh, 
So 100 minus 76 will be equal to 24. 8 3 is a 24, 8 2 is a 16. So this is 5 2 is a 10. So this will come out to be 35 plus 10 by 3 will be what guys? 10 by 3 is 3.33 3 you can write. So this is coming out to be 38.33. I hope it is clear to every student over here. And obviously one more thing, don't forget to write a statement at the end that mode of the given data is 38.33. And one more thing guys, when you are writing the formula, don't put the values directly. What you can do if it's a five mark question, every time label this formula, you understand labeling formula, it means write what is L, write what is H, what is F0, F1, F2. Just mention that in your answer, it must be part of your answer. If it's a five mark question, if it's a two mark question, then no problem, you don't need to write. I hope it is clear. Yeah, the answer is 38.33. So any doubt to any student over here, it's a direct formula based question. Formula must be on your tips. If formula is not there on your tips, you won't be able to do. I hope it is clear guys. Chalo. Let us do this question. Now we'll do some probability questions. Was the question clear? Mean is equal to Milan mean is sigma. Actually, two, three formulae are there to find the mean. Actually, if I explain, one is the direct method. Direct method is sigma fi xi upon sigma fi. This is the direct method. And if you talk about assumed mean method, x bar is equal to a plus sigma fi di upon sigma fi. Now there is one more method which is not in the syllabus. It is called the step deviation method. It is not in the syllabus. So therefore I'm not mentioning it because you understand that other students will get confused maybe. I hope you understand that. What is submission over there Milan? Not able to understand that. Sigma fi x upon sigma fi. This is the direct method to find the mean and a plus sigma fi d upon sigma fi. This is the assumed mean method to find the mean. I hope you it is clear to you. Exactly. Okay, now we'll do some probability based questions because see in the previous two sessions, we already have done questions on statistics and probability. Now this session is more on statistics as, and probability as you have already seen the name of this session. So therefore we are going to do some questions on statistics we have already done and some questions on probability we'll do. Exactly, it will work in all question. Milan, it will work. See what I'm trying to say is these methods are nothing. This is exactly the same to the direct method only Milan. This is basically derived from direct method only. There is a proof of that as well. That also I can explain. But obviously I'm not going to explain it right now. I hope you understand that. So basically you use assumed mean method so as to simplify calculations. There is one step, de step deviation method which will simplify it further. We'll do questions. Don't bother. Exactly, it will work for sure, 110% uh, it will work. What about this question? The probability of getting a doublet in a throw of a pair of dice. What is the answer to this? Tell me quickly. Yugang is getting 1 by 6. What about other students? Anish is also getting 1 upon 6. Actually, the statement of the question was different. I had changed the statement deliberately. <laughs> I hope you understand that. Okay, fine. So getting doublet on both the dice. Now you see the, the set of all, the number of possible outcomes when you throw a pair of dice is what guys? That is 36, it is clear to you or not? Number of all possible outcomes when you throw a pair of dice is 36. Now getting a doublet means same output on both the dice, same output. So it means it is of the form 1, 1, 2, 2 like this. So how many outcomes will be up? It will be up to 6, 6. Right or not? So the number of outcomes over here will be number of favorable outcomes is 6 and number of possible outcomes will be 36. So the answer is 1 by 6. Is it clear to every student over here? So 1 by 6 is the probability. Okay, Manuara, what is doublet in a throw? Doublet means same outcomes on both the dice. I hope it is clear, Manuara. Is it clear? So if I ask one or two more questions from this question, but it's a simple thing, don't bother. So I'm asking one more question over here. Can you find the probability of a triplet, probability of a triplet in a throw of three dice? Can you find that probability of getting a triplet when you throw three dice together? 
Can you tell me the answer to this one? Probability of getting a triplet when you throw three dice together. <clears throat> what about this question guys? So you see, when you throw three dice together, what are what is the number of possible outcomes? See, it will be six into six into six or not. For one dice, possible outcomes are six. For two dice, the possible outcomes are six into six. For three dice, the possible outcomes will be six into six into six. So probability of getting a triplet. Triplet means what? One, one, one. If you if you throw three dice together, so the outcomes will be like this. So triplets will be like this or not 1 1 1 and it will be up till 6 6 6. So 6 triplets will be there. So the answer will be 6 upon 6 into 6 into 6. So the answer will be 1 by 36. Is it clear? Triplet means same outcomes on all the three dice Milan. I hope it is clear. Hello Priya. Hello education. Is it clear? Any doubt to any student? No, that will be 6 upon 216 Ansh. Same outcome in all the three dice. I hope it is clear. So basically three dice will not be asked in the examination, right? I have just asked one question on that. That's it. It will not be asked as such in your examination. I hope it is clear. 1 upon 36 is the answer. Okay? Any doubt to anybody in this session, guys? No, you don't have to mock anybody like that, Yugang. I hope you understand. No, no, in four dice, don't go like that. In four dice, again, it will be six upon six into six into six into six only. Nah. If you're taking four same outcome, so again, it will be six only. I hope you understand that, Sleha. Oh, no, we have to do other questions as well. So tell me, what is the answer to this one? No, it, it will be called as quadruplet, basically. <laughs> Four same things will be asked, uh, will be called quadruplet. Let's not go into that. What is the answer to this? A die is thrown twice. What is the probability that five will not come up either time? What is the probability that five will come up at least once? Tell me. So first you can do the second part of this question. What is the answer to the second part? Five will come up at least once when you throw a pair of dice simultaneously or you throw one dice two times, one die two times basically. You are throwing one die two times Manuara, Bhagwant Dara, you are throwing one dice two, one die two times. It is not only one die, you are throwing it twice. So the outcomes, set of, uh, number of possible outcomes will not be six only, right? Okay number of outcomes will not be 6 in that case. I hope you understand that. I'm just going with the flow. You don't have to go with the flow. Noob, try to understand things. These things will come in the examination. I think this is a, I think NCRT or NCRT exemplar question it is. It will come in the examination, right? So you see, 5 will come up at least once. 5 will come up at least one time. So what you will do? Can, he, can we not take at least once means what? That 5 will come one time and two time. Yes or no? At least once means you will take the cases when 5 is coming one time and you will have to take the cases when 5 is coming two times. So both of the cases you will have to take in this or not at least once. Yes or no guys? So what are those outcomes over here? So first can I not take 1, 5? See? 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5. Yes or no? So I'll take these outcomes or not 4, 5 and 6, 5. Yes or no? Now I will take all the outcomes of 5's category. It means 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5 and 5, 6 you have to take. You got it? So you see these are the all possible outcomes where 5 is coming at least once. In these cases, 
5 is coming only one time. In all of these, 5 is coming one time. And in only one case, it is possible that 5 will come two times. So how many outcomes are there? You will see it, it will be coming out to be 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So can I not say the probability in the second case will be 11 upon 36? Tell me. Is this clear to every student over here? I don't know Sleha. <laughs> it is by birth. You can't, don't bother. Because after this uh, completion of the syllabus, we'll be having some more extra sessions as well. So you don't have to bother. Dekho, baat ye nahi hai noob ki real life mein, dekho, baat ko samjho. Tum jo cheeze grade 10 mein padh, tum history kyun padhte ho? Tum usko real life mein apply kar rahe ho. Are you applying history in your real life? Are you applying literature in your real life? Tell me. No, you're not applying those things in your real life. You're just studying. Kyunki you must know at least thoda knowledge aapko har cheez ka hona chahi. I hope you understand that. Sleha, we are getting 12 upon 36, 11 upon 36 now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 possible, 11 favorable outcomes are there. So the answer will be 11 upon 36. Why are you taking 12 upon 36? Samaj rahe ho? Sleha? No, aisa kuch nahi manu aara. Chalo, ye 11 upon 36 ho gaya. First part ho gaya. 5 will not come up either time. So, dekho, at least once jab 11 a gaya, so either time mein kya hona chahiye? Kya ye total outcomes 36 hai minus at least one wale cases ko subtract karoge? Batao yaha pe. At least one wale cases ko will you subtract over here? So, it will give you 25 upon 36. Is the question clear to every student over here? <laughs> I don't know that Rahul. Batao. Obviously, ho ga aisa kuch usme bio bio, tumhe pata ho ga. You have studied hereditary and, heredity and evolution. I don't remember that. So, dekho, sari cheeze is already there on the Don't Memorize YouTube channel and also the schedule is shared on the Telegram channel as well, Milan. So, please subscribe to the Don't Memorize YouTube channel and to the Telegram channel as well. Tum sari cheezo se you'll be updated. 5 5 मैंने लिया ना 5 5 लिया तो मैंने छोड़ा थोड़ी 5 5 ओ माय गॉड 5 5 तो लिया मैंने आई होप इट इज क्लियर है नूप जस्ट लेट मी नो दैट क्विकली गाइस वी हैव टू डू अदर क्वेश्चंस एज़ वेल इज इट क्लियर टू एवरी स्टूडेंट ओवर हियर एनी डाउट टू एनीबॉडी ओवर हियर गाइस प्लीज डोंट टॉक अबाउट अदर थिंग्स राइट नाउ अभी इसके बारे में बात करो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई होप इट इज क्लियर चलो देखो मैं इंश्योर करता हूं इंश्योर दैट एवरीथिंग इज क्लियर टू यू तुमने देखा होगा मैं चाहूं तो इन चीजों को जल्दी जल्दी कर सकता हूं बट स्टिल अगर आप मेरी क्लास में हैं ये इतना तो इंश्योर करो कि तुम्हें जो भी चीजें बता रहा हूं वो इतनी या तो अगर आती हैं बहुत अच्छी बात है नहीं आती हैं तो सीख के जाओ चलो ठीक है ललिता आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग इट वंस अगेन द सेकंड द सेकंड पार्ट 5 विल कम एट लीस्ट वंस इट मींस एट लीस्ट वंस मींस मिनिमम वन टाइम इट मींस वन टाइम एंड टू टाइम 5 इज कमिंग मिनिमम वन टाइम so you have to include one time and two time both. So you see in all of these cases, five is coming one time or not. Lalita, one, five, two, five, three, five, four, five, 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 uh, four, five, six, five, right? Then five, one, five, two, five, three, five, four. Now you have to include two time as well. So five, five will also be considered and five, six will be considered. So in total, 11 favorable outcomes are there. So probability is going to be 11, 11 upon 36. I hope it is clear, Lalita. Now you have to find the probability that 5 is not coming up either time. So it means it, it is coming on at least one time. It means the prob, uh, number of favorable outcomes is 11. So when it is not coming either time, it will be total outcomes minus total possible outcomes minus 11 outcomes. So it will be 25 by 36. I hope it is clear to every student over here. I hope it is clear Milan. Bilkul yugang. Lagta hu nahi hu. <laughs> Chalo, theek hai. Or question kade. What about this, guys? I hope it is clear. The two dice are thrown together. Find the probability that the product of the numbers on the top of the dice is 6. What is the answer to the first part, guys? Pro uh, product of the numbers on the top of the dice is 6. So you see one thing I'm saying. You don't have to find outcomes by writing all the 36 outcomes. Aisa nahi hai ki sare 36 outcomes you will write 
and then you will pick and choose ki okay this is working this is working no it will it's going to waste your time you have to use your logic that i want six as the product so use your logic try doing it okay you gang okay sleha i don't remember the answer what about other students over here you want the product on the top as six प्रोडक्ट सिक्स होना चाहिए तो बताओ कैसे सोच सकते हो तुम इसको सी द नंबर इज सिक्स सो कैन आई नॉट थिंक इन दी वेज विच सिक्स कैन बी रिटर्न राइट और नॉट सो यू सी आई कैन राइट आई कैन टेक वन सिक्स एज द आउटकम और नॉट आई कैन टेक सिक्स वन एज द आउटकम और नॉट बिकॉज द प्रोडक्ट इज सिक्स वन जो सिक्स सिक्स वन जो सिक्स नो आई कैन टेक टू थ्री बिकॉज टू थ्री जो सिक्स एंड आई कैन टेक थ्री टू बिकॉज थ्री टू जो सिक्स is there any other possibility which will give you product 6 just think and tell me is there any other possible outcome which will give you the product as 6 tell me guys any other possibility will not give you product as 6 so only four outcomes are working over here and total 36 outcomes are there so probability of the first case will be 4 upon 36 right that is 1 by 9 is it clear to every student over here tell me very good kartik is it clear any other you just have to think na any other uh, possibility any other outcome will not give you product as 6 apart from these it's about thinking is it clear to every student over here why are you writing 4 into 1.5 <laughs> so 1 by 9 is the answer right now what about the second case product you want as 12 product you want as 12 this is an ncert exemplar question guys and very well these questions can come in the examination so you want product as 12 product of what product of the numbers coming up on the two dices on the two dice okay i don't remember the answer एग्जैक्टली exactly, मैंने वही बोला आपसे स्लेहा कि सारे केसेस लिखने की जरूरत नहीं है अब तुम 36 सिक्स केसेस लिखोगे एंड यू विल पिक एंड चूज एक एक केस को करके देखोगे तो हो पाएगा बताओ कितना टाइम वेस्ट होगा बताओ पहले स्लेहा तो तुम्हें सारे आउटकम्स लिखने की जरूरत ही नहीं है ऑल पॉसिबल आउटकम्स फॉर्मूला कुछ नहीं है मानुआरा यहां पर कोई फॉर्मूला नहीं है लॉजिक है फॉर्मूला होता तो मैं बता देता बेसिकली मैं सोच कैसे रहा हूं सुनो मैं इसके फैक्टर्स के फॉर्म में सोच रहा हूं ना सिक्स के फैक्टर्स क्या क्या होते हैं वन होता है टू होता है थ्री होता है सिक्स होता है अब इसका कॉम्बिनेशन बना लो तुम समझ पा रहे हो मानवारा आई होप यू यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट सत्यम दैट विल नॉट बी आस यू डोंट हैव टू बॉदर अबाउट दैट इट्स अमरल और अंबर कार्ड वट एवर इट इज दैट्स वॉट आई एम सेंग नू यहां पर तो हम कुछ और ही कर रहे हैं लेकिन चलो कोई नहीं उससे हमें मतलब नहीं है ना वो क्वेश्चन में नहीं आएगा आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट सत्यम वैसे एस निमरल हाँ सही बोले एक ए लिखा होता है ए लिखा होता है इट्स नॉट अ फेस कार्ड फेस कार्ड तो देखो सिर्फ किंग होता है क्वीन होती है और जैक होता है क्योंकि इनके ऊपर यू हैव गॉट फेसेज मेड ओ मैं कुछ और सोच रहा था सॉरी तुम्हारा क्वेश्चन सही है आई एम सॉरी फॉर दैट सत्यम तो किंग क्वीन एंड जैक दे आर फेस कार्ड बिकॉज उनके ऊपर फेस बने होते हैं सिंपल लॉजिक यही आई होप इट इज ओके चलो व्हाट अबाउट दी सेकेंड पार्ट यू वांट प्रोडक्ट एस 12 तो इसको सोच कैसे सकते हो देखो इसको सोचने का सिंपल तरीका है 12 के फैक्टर्स क्या क्या होंगे बताओ वन होगा ट्वेल्व होगा टू होगा थ्री होगा सिक्स होगा और क्या होगा फोर भी होगा बस इसके अलावा कोई फैक्टर्स होते हैं ट्वेल्व के क्या अच्छा अब यह बता दो ट्वेल्व तो तुम ले नहीं सकते ट्वेल्व ले सकते हो क्या भाई डाइस पे ट्वेल्व नहीं आता है ऐसा कभी गलती से मत कर देना कि वन ट्वेल्व और ट्वेल्व वन भी कर दिया अनर्थ हो जाएगा ऐसा मत करना ट्वेल्व आता ही नहीं इसका मतलब है कि यू हैव टू यूज दीज पॉसिबिलिटीज और नॉट टेल मी सो यू वॉन्ट प्रोडक्ट एज ट्वेल्व ओवर हेयर सो कैसे होगा बताओ <coughs> तो देखो सिक्स टू जर ट्वेल्व पॉसिबल है टू सिक्स जर ट्वेल्व पॉसिबल है उसके बाद थ्री फोर जर ट्वेल्व इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी एंड फोर थ्री जर ट्वेल्व इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी इज देयर एनी अदर पॉसिबिलिटी ओवर हेयर इफ यू वॉन्ट ट्वेल्व एज प्रोडक्ट पता नहीं मुझे क्या हो क्या होता है स्लेहा किंग और क्वीन का बेटा है जैक चलो ये सबको क्लियर है तो सिर्फ फोर पॉसिबिलिटीज है ना इज देर एनी अदर पॉसिबिलिटी टेल मी गाइस कोई और पॉसिबिलिटी है क्या प्रोडक्ट ट्वेल्व के लिए 
तुम इन इनसे देख लो ना इनके फैक्टर्स से देख लो सो so, यानी इसका भी प्रॉबिलिटी विल बी फोर बाई थर्टी सिक्स राइट एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू वन बाई नाइन इज इट क्लियर टू एवरी स्टूडेंट ओवर हेयर स्टैटिस्टिक्स करने के बाद स्टैटिस्टिक्स हमने कर लिया स्लेहा इसी क्लास में हमने और क्वेश्चन प्रैक्टिस किए एंड एक और सेशन मैंने स्टैटिस्टिक्स का करवाया हुआ है तो यूट्यूब पे चेक करो डोंट मेमोराइज यूट्यूब चैनल पे बोर्ड ब्रह्मास्त्र नाम से प्लेलिस्ट है मैंने सारे चैप्टर्स करवा दिए लास्ट क्लास है अभी वैसे इसके बाद और क्लासेस हम करेंगे अलग अलग टाइप के ट्रिक्स के लिए कुछ क्वेश्चन पेपर्स डिस्कस करेंगे आई मीन सैंपल पेपर्स ये सारी चीजें अभी करेंगे राइट चलो प्लीज फोकस सो इज इट क्लियर टू एवरी स्टूडेंट ओवर हेयर किसी को कोई डाउट ना लास्ट वाला बताओ प्रोडक्ट वॉन्ट वी वॉन्ट द प्रोडक्ट टू बी इक्वल टू सेवन इसकी प्रॉबिलिटी क्या होगी वी वॉन्ट द प्रोडक्ट टू बी इक्वल टू सेवन इसके लिए प्रॉबिलिटी बताओ बताओ जल्दी से तुम लोग बात तो कर रहे हो क्वेश्चन करो ना जल्दी से ठीक है बातें भी कर लो सही है लेकिन इसका आंसर तो बताओ कम से कम नेक्स्ट क्लास कब होगा सर वो तुम्हें पता लग जाएगा देखो अभी ये फिलहाल इस मेरे मैथमेटिक्स का ये लास्ट है लेकिन इसके बाद अभी साइंस में और सेशन हो रहे हैं फिर मैथ्स में भी होंगे डोंट बॉदर ठीक है मिलन वेरी गुड प्रोडक्ट जीरो सेवन हो ही नहीं सकता भाई सेवन का भी प्रोडक्ट हो सकता है क्या तुम पहले ये बताओ तुम ऐसे देख लो ना सेवन के प्राइम फैक्टर्स क्या क्या हैं वन है या सेवन है और तुम्हें पता है सेवन तो आ ही नहीं सकता डाइस पे तो प्रोडक्ट सेवन हो ही नहीं सकता सो so, इसकी प्रॉबिलिटी क्या हो जाएगी जीरो अपॉन थर्टी सिक्स यानी जीरो है ना प्रोडक्ट सेवन तो कभी हो ही नहीं सकता तो उसकी प्रॉबिलिटी हो गई जीरो क्लियर है वेरी गुड वाह सब ने जीरो लिख दिया राहुल मिलन ललिता वेरी गुड मानुआरा नूब डोंट डू दैट मानुआरा आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू आर इन अ क्लास क्या कर रहे हो उसको समझो थोड़ा सा जिम्मेदार बनो स्पैम मत करो प्लीज चलो ठीक है क्लियर है सबको और क्वेश्चन करते हैं बताइए प्रॉबिलिटी के और क्वेश्चन अभी करते हैं इसका आंसर बताओ सिंपल क्वेश्चन है ये बहुत ही आसान सा <coughs> शकुनी के डाइस में तो ये प्रोबेबिलिटी वर्क नहीं करेगा चलो हाँ वो बात भी सही है तुम्हारी चलो बताओ व्हाट अबाउट दिस क्वेश्चन गाइस? अ बॉक्स कंटेन्स कार्ड्स नंबर सिक्स टू फिफ्टी अ कार्ड इज ड्रॉन एट रैंडम फ्रॉम द बॉक्स द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट ड्रॉन कार्ड हैज अ नंबर विच इज अ परफेक्ट स्क्वायर सिक्स टू फिफ्टी है ये ध्यान रखना बताओ क्या होगा इसका आंसर नहीं नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं है लास्ट क्लास नहीं है मानवारा भी क्लासेस होंगी और सैंपल पेपर डिस्कस करेंगे अच्छा एक सेशन तो जिसमें पूरा मैथमेटिक्स कवर करेंगे वो भी सेशन एक होगा समझ रहे हो ना मैराथन सेशन वो भी होगा तो अभी उसका डिसाइड नहीं हुआ बट तुम्हें दिख जाएगा डोंट मेमराइज यूट्यूब चैनल पर एक दो दिन में दो तीन दिन में वो होगा जिसमें हम पूरा मैथमेटिक्स ऑफ ग्रेट टेन वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन लाइक फोर आवर्स ओके सो आई नॉट से द एग्जैक्ट टाइमिंग ओवर हेयर राइट नाउ ठीक है तो वो होगा चलो तो यहां पे देखो क्या है कि सिंपल क्वेश्चन ये तो देखो सबसे पहले ये बताओ सिक्स सिक्स टू फिफ्टी कितने नंबर्स हैं यहां पर सिक्स से फिफ्टी अगर तुम नंबर्स काउंट करोगे तो कितने होंगे बताओ सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन फाइव इधर हो गया और फोर्टी फोर्टी फाइव हो गए सो फोर्टी फाइव नंबर ओवर हेयर अब उनके बीच में परफेक्ट स्क्वायर कितने हैं परफेक्ट स्क्वायर का मतलब टू टू फोर थ्री थ्री जर नाइन होगा देखो थ्री थ्री जर नाइन फोर फोर जर सिक्सटीन फाइव फाइव जर ट्वेंटी फाइव सिक्स सिक्स जर थर्टी सिक्स सेवन सेवन जर फोर्टी नाइन यानी कितने हो गए वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव हो गया खत्म क्वेश्चन यानी फाइव अपॉन फोर्टी फाइव इज द प्रॉबिलिटी और नॉट गाइज सो वन अपॉन नाइन इज द आंसर एनी डाउट टू एनी स्टूडेंट ओवर हेयर एग्जैक्टली इट्स या ऑब्वियसली आई कैन स्पीक इन इंग्लिश आई एम सॉरी इन बिटवीन मेनी अ टाइम्स आई स्पीक इन हिंदी एज वेल राहुल बट आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू द क्वेश्चन इज क्लियर राइट It's a direct question, right? Exactly. No, no, Sleha, you just count, na. See, you do like this. See, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So five numbers over here, Sleha. Now, if you start with eleven and fifty, so these are forty or not? Tell me, Sleha. You understand like this? 
सो टोटल फोर्टी प्लस फाइव इज फोर्टी फाइव और नॉट स्लेहा इज इट ओके इज इट ओके सो हाउ थ्री 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 जर नाइन ओके वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्क्वायर स्लेहा वी हैव टू फाइंड दिस स्क्वायर विच इज अ परफेक्ट स्क्वायर सो थ्री थ्री जर नाइन इज कमिंग फोर फोर जर सिक्सटीन इज कमिंग फाइव फाइव जर ट्वेंटी फाइव इज कमिंग सिक्स सिक्स जर थर्टी सिक्स इज कमिंग सेवन सेवन जर फोर्टी नाइन इज कमिंग आई होप यू गॉट इट स्लेहा चलो ये क्लियर है सबको आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू एवरी स्टूडेंट ओवर हेयर चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन देखते हैं गाइज वट अबाउट दिस इज डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन ओवर हेयर अ डाई इज थ्रोन वंस द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ एन इवन कॉम्पोजिट नंबर कैन यू टेल मी वट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ एन इवन कॉम्पोजिट नंबर एग्जैक्टली सिक्स इज ऑल्सो इंक्लूडेड इन दिस क्वेश्चन बिकॉज इट इज रिटर्न सिक्स टू फिफ्टी सो देर फोर यू हैव टू इंक्लूड सिक्स एज वेल ओवर देयर Now what about this? A fair die is thrown once. The probability of an even composite number. Tell it quickly, guys. So the set of possible outcomes when you throw a die, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six. So even composite number. What are the composite numbers which are even over here? So four and six. They are even composite numbers, right? so the probability will be 2 upon 6 so the answer is 1 by 3 is it clear so option b is over here option b is correct any doubt guys exactly no you gang acha ha between ki baat bol rahe correct theek hai chalo agar over here itself we are i am asking probability of an even prime number what is the probability of even prime number over here when you throw a die what is the probability of getting an even prime number composite number means number having more than two factors jaise dekh lo 4 ek composite number hai because iske factors 1 hai 2 hai aur 4 hai theek hai lekin 3 is a prime number kyunki iske sirf do factors hai 1 kya hai neither prime nor composite because uska sirf ek factor hai ये वाले सवाल क्लास टेन में पूछोगे क्या बताओ मिलन अ नंबर हैविंग मोर देन टू फैक्टर्स फॉर एग्जांपल फोर इज अ कॉम्पोजिट नंबर बिकॉज इट्स हैविंग थ्री फैक्टर्स थ्री इज अ प्राइम नंबर बिकॉज इट्स हैविंग टू फैक्टर्स ओनली नंबर हैविंग टू फैक्टर्स इज अ प्राइम नंबर अ नंबर हैविंग मोर देन टू फैक्टर्स इज अ कॉम्पोजिट नंबर एंड वन इज नीदर प्राइम नॉर कॉम्पोजिट बिकॉज इट्स हैविंग ओनली वन फैक्टर चलो हाँ ये भी बोल सकते एनी नंबर डिविजिबल बाई टू नहीं ऐसा नहीं है नू ऐसा थोड़ी है इन भी तो कॉम्पोजिट नंबर है तो नाइन भी तो कॉम्पोजिट नंबर है इसके फैक्टर्स भी तो तीन है एनी नंबर डिविजिबल बाय टू इज एन इवन नंबर एनी नंबर डिविजिबल बाय टू को हम बोलते हैं इवन नंबर चलो सो व्हाट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग एन इवन प्राइम नंबर व्हेन यू रोल अ डाई टेल मी हेलो स्कूबा ब्लू वेलकम टू दिस सेशन इवन कॉम्पोजिट नंबर कैन बी इन मिलन A composite number which is even, right? Chalo, exactly you gang. So even prime number सिर्फ एक होता है देखो टू is the only even prime number. टू is the only even prime number. So the probability of getting an even prime number when you roll a die will be वन by सिक्स I hope it is clear. टू is the only even prime number. Any doubt in this question? Exactly. टू is the only even prime number possible. any doubt to any student over here chalo 1 by 6 all even numbers are composite except 2 exactly you gang all even numbers are composite except 2 2 is the only even prime number you can take 4 see it is the only even prime number because it's having it is an even number which is having two factors apart from this if you see any even number it will have more than two factors any even number will be having more than two factors you can think of any even number it will have more than two factors except 2 2 is even but it will it is having only two factors i hope it is okay okay let us take the next question what about this 
So a bat contains five red balls and some blue balls. If the probability of drawing a blue ball is double that of a red ball, determine the number of blue balls in the bag. A bag contains five red balls and some blue balls. Probability of drawing a blue ball is double that of a red ball. NCERT, it's a question from NCERT optional exercise. It's a direct question all the, although. I'm basically from Bihar only J engineering, but I have been in Delhi since my childhood. Ab yugang confused ho gaya, ye kahan se hai? <laughs> Chalo, isko karo and let me know the answer quickly. क्वेश्चन करो क्वेश्चन आएंगे जल्दी से बताओ क्या हो गया इसमें दिस इज एन इक्वेशन वन बाई टू कहां से ललिता वन बाई टू कैन नॉट बी दी नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स कम ऑन नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स हमेशा एक नेचुरल नंबर होगा ना वो कभी वन बाई टू कैसे हो सकता है ऐसा कभी तुमने देखा वहां पे आधा जानवर खड़ा है या वहां पर तीन बाई लोग हैं ऐसा सुना है कभी <laughs> चलो तो यहां पे क्या है कि सम ब्लू बॉल सपोज द नंबर ऑफ ब्लू बॉल्स इज एक्स ओवर है राइट नो द क्वेश्चन ओवर हेयर इज प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ड्राइंग अ ब्लू बॉल प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ड्राइंग अ ब्लू बॉल आई एम राइटिंग बी इज ट्वाइस द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ड्राइंग अ रेड बॉल दिस इज द क्वेश्चन राइट प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ड्राइंग अ ब्लू बॉल इज डबल द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ अ रेड बॉल ना देखो ब्लू बॉल टोटल एक्स थे Now, देखो ब्लू बॉल इज एक्स एंड टोट रेड बॉल्स इज फाइव सो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ड्रॉइंग अ ब्लू बॉल विल बी नंबर ऑफ ब्लू बॉल्स अपॉन टोटल नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स नंबर ऑफ ब्लू बॉल्स अपॉन टोटल नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ अ रेड बॉल विल बी नंबर ऑफ रेड बॉल्स अपॉन टोटल नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स येस और नो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ अ रेड बॉल विल बी नंबर ऑफ रेड बॉल्स अपॉन टोटल नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स सो यू सी दिस विल गेट कैंसिल्ड आउट सो द नंबर ऑफ ब्लू बॉल्स इज कमिंग आउट टू बी टेन The answer is ten over here. Is it clear? Ha, ye bhi keh sakte ho. Chalo clear. Ten aa raha hai. Five kaise aa raha hai? Tumhara Hansik. Question hai Milan. Clear hai ye nahi hai? Batao. Any doubt to any student over here? Tum aisi aise sawal kyu kar rahe ho Milan? Ye kya hai? Main kahan aa gaya? Ye to maine zindagi mein kabi nahi dekha tha. This is suppose this is supposed to be a grade seven question actually. Uh, Scuba, to be really very honest, but this is given in NCERT optional exercise. Therefore, this is a grade ten class. Scuba, grade ten of CBSE, grade ten board mathematics of India. I I suppose that you are not from India. Maybe some students are not from India over here. No, this is a grade seven question. I have seen questions like this in grade seven as well. Okay, what about this? What is the answer to this question over here? Yeah, grade seven as well. Grade means class, Leha. What about this one? The probability of getting a bad egg in a lot of four hundred is this number of bad eggs in the lot. Bata jaldi se kya ho? Kitne kharab ande hai maha par? I'm from SCERT. Okay, no problem. SCERT is State Council of Educational Research and Training, Noob. and ncert is national council of educational research and training jisko tum rashtriya shaikshik anusandhan evam prashikshan parishad bhi bolte ho chalo iska answer sada acha theek hai probability of getting a bad ball in a lot is this number of bad eggs bad eggs hai suppose number of bad eggs tumne x assume kar liya so probability of bad eggs kya hoga x number of bad eggs upon टोटल नंबर ऑफ एग्स यही तो होगा प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग बैड एग्स विल बी नंबर ऑफ बैड एग्स अपॉन टोटल नंबर ऑफ एग्स और प्रोबेबिलिटी किसके इक्वल है जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री फाइव के इक्वल है खत्म हो गया क्वेश्चन ये भी एनसीआरटी एग्जाम्पलर का क्वेश्चन है सो दिस इज फोर हंड्रेड इंटू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री फाइव अब इसको सिंप्लीफाई करो तुम्हारा काम है जस्ट रिमूव द डेसिमल ओवर हेयर यूल गेट वन थाउजेंड ओवर हेयर दिस विल गेट कैंसिल्ड आउट So five seven are thirty five five two are ten two two are four. It's coming out to be fourteen. So number of bad eggs over here is fourteen. Any doubt to any student over here in this question, guys? Okay, fine. So maybe you are having a different board. 
but i go, i guess if you are in ua you must have you must be having cbse only right although i don't know but it must be like that i guess that okay so see actually we are done with the questions one question i'm going to ask over here from dice uh, wait give me some seconds i'll ask one question from dice over here itself <coughs> Can you find what is the probability of 7, uh, sum 7, sorry probability of sum suppose I am asking 13, when you roll a pair of dice what is the probability of sum 13, United Arab Emirates, how are you asking this So when you roll a pair of dice simultaneously what is the probability of getting sum is equal to 13, can you tell that? What is the probability of getting sum is equal to 13? When you roll a pair of dice simultaneously, okay, so when you roll a pair of dice simultaneously, maximum sum can be what, guys? You see, maximum sum can be 6 plus 6, 12 or not. Tell me. When you roll a pair of dice simultaneously, maximum sum can be 12 only. So, if I ask the probability of sum 13, the answer will be 0 upon 36. You cannot, you can, you can never get a uh, sum to be equal to 13 over here, right? So the probability is going, come, uh, going to be 0. Is it clear? Sleha just over, over, that is Central Board of Secondary Education, Milan. Now, can you find what is the probability of sum less than or equal to 12? Can you tell that? Less than or equal to 12. Bolo guys, what is the sum of uh, probability of getting sum less than or equal to 12 when you roll a pair of dice simultaneously? <coughs> oh, he must not be knowing that noob. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> He's not from India. So therefore, maybe he is having different uh, syllabus. That's why he's getting confused. I mean, in grades as well. So what is the probability of getting sum less than or equal to 12 when you roll off a pair of dice simultaneously? Okay, very good. So Sleha, Dynamic Creator and Noob answered it correctly. See, maximum sum can be 12 only. Na? Maximum sum will be 12 every time. So this I had already explained, right? That maximum sum when you roll a pair of dice simultaneously will be 12 only. And every time this sum will be less than or e less than or equal to 12. So every time this sum is going to be less than or equal to 12 only. So the probability is 1. So the probability that sum is less than or equal to 12 is 1. I hope it is clear. You don't need to prove it, Milan. You just have to see every time, Milan, you just have to show some examples. See, minimum sum will be this or not, Milan. 1 plus 1, 2. And maximum sum is 6 plus 6, 12. So whatever may be the sum is coming out to be, it will every time be less than or equal to 12 or not, Milan. Tell me. I hope it is clear. I hope it is clear to every student over here. So that's all we needed to discuss in this session, guys. So actually, we are done with the syllabus, right? We are done with the syllabus of mathematics, but it's not that we are done with the classes. We are going to have some practice sessions, some important question sessions as well, some motivation sessions as well. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Don't Memorize YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon and also don't forget to subscribe to the Telegram channel as well. Because all the classes are coming, we will practice questions, we will discuss sample papers. Just like I think Yugang has said, there are some more questions CBSE has given, there are some other types of questions, right? So we will do that. Milan, I am not going to take doubts right now. I hope you understand because there is a time limit. Yes, absolutely. So we will do all the things we will do. Okay? Don't forget to attend the class and subscribe. Subscribe and press the bell icon so that whatever things are, they will be aware of you, right? Aisa na ho ki tum bhool jau. So okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the class and don't forget to check out the playlist named as Board Brahmas on the Don't Memorize YouTube channel kyunki us pe sari cheeze we have already done. Agar mathematics and science ki bhi baat karo to, to wo cheeze tum kar sakte ho. So that's all we needed to discuss in this class guys. We'll meet in the next class. Bye bye. Take care everybody.